I have news. Your very meaningful messages around talent transformation are likely to fall on deaf ears. Yes, despite immense clarity, because we live in a world with too much information and very little time. So what doesn't stick gets ignored. So what is the solution for human resources professionals and recruiters who have to convey messages around talent transformation? Storytelling. Let's consider this situation. A factory is going to become a smart factory, which essentially means it's a lights down factory. Robots are going to be working there. And when robots work in a factory, they don't need lights. As soon as the current workforce comes to know that the factory is going to become a smart factory, they tell themselves a story. My job is gone. I'm going to be retrenched and robots are going to take over. The morale is sinking and fear and anxiety is rising. And at this point, a human resource professional has a very tough task to manage the sinking morale, to manage the exiting workforce because a lot of them have started looking for alternate careers. And amidst of all of this chaos, the human resource professional has to go and find talent that can work in this newly digitally transformed factory with the new age skills. If that is you, congratulations. You have arrived the best possible opportunity you can possibly have in your career to be able to become a strategic business partner. What you're going to have to do is to shift the smart factory story from productivity centric to people centric. You see the productivity centric is a business message. People centric is your job. So imagine this. You walk into a room, there are 500 factory people sitting there whose morales are really low. You walk up, you get up on the stage and you say to everyone, our purpose in becoming a smart factory is not just productivity, it's also to make you the workforce of the future. Let's talk about suiting. Suiting is just like you. She works in this factory, every day she comes, she takes a trolley, she takes our product, which is a semiconductor chips, and she loads the trolley up with trays of semiconductor chips. She stacks them up and she moves the trolley from one end of the factory to the other end of the factory. When Suiting first joined us, she used to move from one end of the factory to the other end of the factory roughly about eight times. But because the demand for our product is rapidly rising, it is directly impacting what Suiting is doing on the factory floor. She's now having to move from one end of the factory to the other end of the factory about 25 times. And if any one of you who has walked this factory floor would know how tiring a task that is. It is just not sustainable for a human to keep up with that workload. So why don't we take away that workload from suiting and give it to someone who never gets tired? That is a robot. And for suiting, we have an even better proposition. Why don't we teach her skills, which will help her become the supervisor of robots? If you are like suiting, we have all the learning initiatives possible for you to be able to become supervisors of machines. You see, the digitally transforming world has provided the human resources professionals a great opportunity to really work with the morale of the people and motivate them to learn the new age skills, to take their current force and make them the workforce of the future. But a human resource professional can only do that if they know how to tell the right story in the right frame. Let's look at another situation. An organization wants to hire 20 developers. Over a coffee, the HR business partner tells the recruiter, I mean, coding and programming skills are all a given, but what we really want from these developers is empathy, because empathy triggers innovation. The recruiter nods her head, walks out of the meeting, and asks herself, how am I going to qualitatively quantify whether a candidate has empathy or not? Of course a recruiter can do that, but only if the recruiter knows how to tell a story about empathy first, to create an understanding around empathy and not just provide knowledge to the candidate that we need empathy for this role. Now let's imagine, here's a situation. You are sitting in a cafe and you're talking to the candidate. You say to the candidate, you have excellent programming and coding skills. But we are also looking for someone 
who has empathy. Let me try and create an understanding around what do I mean by that? And you share a story by Satya Nadella. So you say, here's an example shared by Satya Nadella. This was around you know, 25 years ago or more when Satya Nadella was giving his first rounds of interview at Microsoft. An up and coming manager at that time, Richard Tate, interviewed Satya and he asked him a question which had nothing to do with programming and coding, etc. He asked him a question that if you see a baby lying on the street and crying, what would you do, Satya? Satya instantly responded by saying, I will call 911. And at the end of the interview, when Satya was walking out, Richard put his arms around Satya and said to him, you need some empathy. You need to pick up the baby first and then call 911. That story really creates an understanding around what empathy is. And when the recruiter has told that story, because a story begets a story, now the recruiter can ask a candidate, talk to me about a time when something similar has happened with you. When you have developed a product, or generally in your life, you can proudly say that you have demonstrated empathy. Now you see, in this world where we are looking for skills more like creativity, emotional intelligence, generosity, compassion, empathy, we can create an understanding and make sure that we get candidates who are right for these traits for the organization. Because knowledge is not understanding, only a story can help the recruiter really qualitatively quantify whether a candidate has that trait or not. Here's another situation. A customer tells a recruiter, we are looking for someone who's really experienced in the oil and gas sector. You look at the job description and you tell the customer, what you really need is not someone from oil and gas sector. That is irrelevant. What you really need is someone who's good at data analytics and amazing at storytelling, who can take the analysis and tell stories for resonance and relevance. You tell the customer that please, let's just look at the skill and not worry about the industry. The customer says, absolutely not. You're going back and forth and back and forth. In this situation, the best option a recruiter has is to influence the decision by telling a success story of another organization who was successful because they made unconventional choices where they detached themselves from industry experience. The recruiter tells the Japan Airlines story. Japan Airlines went from filing bankruptcy to making a profit of 160 billion yen. How? Because they made an unconventional choice of hiring a CEO who was a trained monk and had absolutely no aviation background. So what did this monk do? He came and he analyzed the psychology of the situation of what was happening with people. He went to the government of Japan and he said to them, how can we let Japan Airlines sink? It's a matter of national pride. It's a matter of national security. He went back to his team. He broke the team down into small, small unit, gave them empowerment back and put them all through philosophy classes where they learned how to save cost but save cost with an attached purpose of ensuring that the pride of the nation Japan Airlines lives and thrives so this monk used a completely different way to transform the organization he himself led by example and did not take salary for three years so when you look at Japan Airlines you clearly understand it's what the organization needs in that particular time for growth for solving problems and what skills are important industry experience is not as relevant you see recruiters passionate recruiters often have unique perspectives and they want to influence decisions but they can't influence decisions of their customers by just expressing their articulate point of views they're going to have to attach real stories where customers can see success and that's when their decisions are influenced now just remember if you want to motivate people to learn the new age skill don't just convey articulate points and messages tell a story instead. If you want to create an understanding around traits like creativity, empathy, generosity, don't just provide knowledge, create an understanding with a story. 
if you are a passionate recruiter who has unique perspectives and unique point of views around hiring decisions, tell a story because that way you can influence the decision. In a world where there is too much information, very little time, what doesn't stick sure gets ignored and stories stick. Go make the change happen with stories.